of a, a saw hand ring? Yeah, so he, one of the criticisms that I've heard from certain Christian entertainment, especially movies that deal with, um, I forget the name of it, but it started with Michael Bean, and he, uh, it was an apocalyptic tale, you know, the Antichrist, and one of the criticisms was at the end that Jesus was almost made out to be like an action hero. As, as opposed to Lord, so the movie Jesus Christ Vampire Slayer. Right. So well, one of the one of the pitfalls you had talked about was making sure that you don't glamorize evil. What about the flip side that we don't reduce yeah, Jesus in that we message don't show to a as yes. equal but opposite opponents? Yeah. yeah. Jesus can be an action hero. The, the, when you saw that they had the market in the church, he, he made broke stuff. The whip. Yeah. You went crazy chicken. <laughs> You know, I think it. I think it goes back to what I was talking about earlier, with you know treating both sides of, of the equation with the integrity that they deserve uh, in order to make a good story. Because you know, if you, yes. if you're making out Jesus to be something that he's not, then the, the if you're aiming for a, a Christian target audience at all, yeah, you're going to lose them. Uh, but if you know if you're treating it with uh, with the integrity. Uh, that hopefully you're, you're passionate about, that's what you're creating, then, uh, you know, it's, you're, you're not going to turn him into something like that. Whenever I'm talking about Christian entertainment, a lot of people will bring up facing giants and, and, you know, fireproof and what have you, and I know in, in <coughs> fireproof, um, what's his name? No. Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron. Yeah. He was very adamant about not doing the kissing at the yeah. end with anyone other than his wife. Right. And I could certainly appreciate that, but on the and I wonder if that's why we're scared to, you know, like you say, give, you know, do more of a real depiction of evil because we don't want to ask someone to do that. But Jesus told stories. Yeah. If, if your church has a Christmas play, then you know who plays the devil. Exactly. Right. Is, is he sitting by doing that? Right. So I, I think sometimes we have a little weird feeling there where we're like, well, we don't want to ask someone to act like that. What if that was, you know, to take root or something? But I feel like Jesus told stories, and I feel like we should treat that as we're telling the story. Yeah. I'm not advocating a behavior or a lifestyle. And that's what I'm like. I don't want to say I'm struggling with it, but I have a character who my protagonist actually is very naughty. Oh, and it's kind of mistake. I'm, I'm struggling with how to make it work in such a way that people still like her. Because if your people start to stop liking your protagonist, they're going to look down. <laughs> so you got to make sure that this is going to happen. Your target audience is still going to like her. And, and then i got to feel comfortable with writing all this stuff, which it's, it's going to work. <laughs> you know, and, and, and it, but, it, no, but if she's not naughty, then we're sort of yeah, right, right. You know, I mean, all of us, it doesn't matter if we've actually done stuff or we've thought about it. All of us have issues. All of us are sort of naughty. You know, yeah, and so. some of the books I've published, the ways that I try to blend the religion and the horror, I thought it might be a corporate shill for a moment here. <laughs> uh, Legend of Poor Enough is kind of a Narnia type story where a boy goes to a sort of magical land where animals talk and there are weird things. He eventually finds um, his great, 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 several great his grandfather, who was the first guy who went there, uh, and explores his theory that the land was created by fallen angels who were jealous of God's creation and wanted to make their own. Yeah. Oh, man, I just thought Bayor, this is not at all a Christian book, but it does explore religious themes. Uh, in this case, a necromancer is on trial by the church for communing by the dead, or communing with the dead. Uh, it ex this is an 18 over book. Uh, it contains some scenes of uh, zombie work, let's say. Okay. Right. Uh, Immortal Betrayal, Immortal Burden, this is about a Viking who gets the first to become a vampire. And eventually, God puts him in charge of the entire undead community. Wow. <laughs> Past Lives, this is written by a guy that I'm in Bible study with. Uh, this is not a Christian book, but his next book, Dark Halo, is about spiritual warfare. This is a serial killer reincarnated into a normal man, and the two lives fighting each other. It involves hypnosis and some other things. It, there are some Christian things, yes. sins of the Father. Right. And then Afterthoughts, this is a psychic detective uh, who can 
occasionally read minds, things like that. And then in the second one, she takes on a girl who is maybe possessed by a demon. Which, if you can read minds, is not necessarily someone you want to get involved with. <laughs> the exorcism scene is very well done and well researched. Before we run out of time, uh, I'm going to give away a couple of small items real quick. Um, who can tell me who created Hello World? Uh, and, uh, I just, Mark, I forgot his name. Close, Joe. oh, you almost had it. It's Joe or Mark, right? I, I lost it name. sounds kind of like Mark. What? No, I, I have a huge volume of the book, and I just... <laughs> Can it be a mic instead of a mic? Mic, uh, mic and a mic. Well, you got the first letter right, Devin. I know. 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 He actually, I met him, and he said that he he got he gets that kind of reaction a lot from from Christians who avoided his his. Uh, work initially because of the, the whole connection with hell and then came to really enjoy it. I've also run into people who uh, have come and questioned us at the, at the Fans for Christ table um, about you know who we are and what our views are on things and they're surprised to find out how many of us are real fans of hell. Uh, so we have some pretty good fans of it. Uh, uh, anybody like President Ewell? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just... <laughs> Well, you guys, books, so. you guys split those. Uh, anybody like Dead Space? Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> Claire's my woman. Oh. All right. Uh, oh, so speaking of devil. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Two of these. And uh, dead time stories. <laughs> Paranormal Activity, Predators, and Nightmare on Elm Street. So you guys, on your way out, come grab one of those if you want. Uh, oh, and the, uh, I forgot to mention, this, the CD was actually uh, donated to us by HM Magazine, um, who also gave us some, uh, uh, some press yep, for, uh, for the panel here, so we're going to give them a shout out. Uh, and also, for, we also have a couple of stickers, if you uh, want the HM stickers. You can uh, sign up to uh, read them at uh, hmmagazine.com. Uh, and a uh, Voided Realities bookmark. So first come, first serve on that. Guys, are excited. entirely about the work of the apocalypse. Oh, yeah, yeah. First one is you play the lore and the apocalypse came way too early. And it turned out an angel that... Uh, and summons the destroyer to the Supreme War of the Man God, and you're just trying to redeem yourself. Same one coming out in the day that it's awesome that our work is uh, I did see the artwork on the front side for the next one. Looks like we have time for one more question sure. to finish up. Anybody? Or no more questions. We can do it like that too. <laughs> Perhaps I'm nice and neat that way. I guess, what do you guys think of the devil inside me? Inside me? Oh, I, I did want to take the time to go see that before the convention, but, but things happened. I thought it was happening. Uh, I thought it came out like, like a week or two ago. Uh, it looks like it might have merit, but trailers, you can never, you can never yeah. tell. It's not awesome. Hollywood, unfortunately, is getting worse at making movies and, and better at making trailers for the bad movies. I like the Avengers trailer where you had no idea in the first trailer what they were even fighting. <laughs> and now I know I'm very much looking forward to Oh, it's, it, I think and, uh, he's got either the Kree or the Skrulls, so he gets some sweet hair. There's some trailers that sort of go on as well. Does that tell you nothing about them? They want right. to show you, like, beautiful images. Yeah. But it's like, well, what is the movie about? Right. Five-second cuts and the newest rock, the heavy rock music song. Yeah. 
that's it. I can't remember what it was, but one of my friends sent me, like, this is going to be the best movie this year. And I watched it. Couldn't tell what it was about. Like, what is it about? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> but it's going to be great. Whatever it is, man. And somebody else was like, I think it's about an astronaut. I'm like, what? Does it think Cowboy Aliens? No, no, I, I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what it was. The, the, the trailer had some running water and uh, I don't know, just like unrelated images. But it's like, what would I want to see? They've also cut a trailer. It's like one movie that I haven't seen, seen it granted, is Mary's Baby. And that trailer is like three minutes long. Whereas everything now is like 30 seconds. So there was also a lot more story. Well, I just want to talk to you about the second part of somebody's book. <laughs> I guess I guess once we're wrapping up, just want to thank all y'all for coming out. Uh, if you have any questions that you couldn't get out of your out of your lips now, um, over in the, uh, the the dealer section, uh, track 29, uh, right in the front row, we got the finish for price. Uh, right behind that, we got uh, this one of man's booth. God, my name is horrible with names. Hi, horrible with names. Hey, Mike. So. Any kind of uh, idea or, or comment that you want to leave or talk about, we're happy to have you. And, and there's free game at church tomorrow. Absolutely. That's right. I feel everyone.